Hi, and welcome back to another video. For this one, I sat down with our Nextcloud co-founder and director of marketing, Jos Portfleet, and we went over some of the most asked questions about Nextcloud. Hope you enjoy. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. We got lots of um, positive comments on the last video. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, make sure to watch that links in the description below, uh, among all the other links of uh, stuff that we're going to talk about today in this Q&A video. Um, most of the comments were from people who were very glad and happy that Next.conference Conference is coming back. And uh, we got one by uh, Jonashen, I think is his name. Um, he is very happy to hear about the conference, and I hope we are uh, giving out Next.Cloud shirts. He is running low on those. Yeah, well, I think our stock is actually fairly low, um, but we have some ideas of, um, yeah, getting a way for people to get t-shirts because, well, with the whole pandemic, we've had, of course, no event for a while, and we always tell people, oh, come to an event, meet us. But of course, that's, well, most of the events we do are in Europe, and that's already limiting, you know? It's not feasible for everybody to just fly to Europe to get an extra t-shirt. Um, so yeah, we want to have something in place where people can get, you know, some nice merch if they want to, yeah. but that's coming. Watch the space. Most stuff is coming. Um, also, uh, loosely connected to the conference, uh, Jeffrey is asking, can mobile app developers join a party or a separate session for apps like, uh, Les Pa? I believe that's about the app developer contest that we're running for conference. Ah, yes. If mobile apps, yeah, I think um, um, I might even have replied on social media at some point to a question about that. Um, absolutely. Mobile apps are definitely included. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're building a mobile app for Nextcloud, um, you know, something, I don't know, an iOS app for DEC or something. Or um, Please do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. love that with the new beta, we're not getting the DEC cards as a widget, but uh, if it's still open in the browser at the moment. But yes. Um, out of this tech, we even updated the blog post for that link below. Um, then sticking kind of with apps and getting to the mobile client, um, someone asked, uh, are there any plans on fixing background auto upload for iOS? Currently, you have to keep the app open to upload. Um, doesn't start in the background automatically. I believe that's a platform limitation we have at the moment. Yes, unfortunately, it used to be possible to upload. So basically, the app needs to be woken up by iOS, right? And iOS only has a couple of very restrictive reasons why it wakes up an app. Uh, it used to be that one of the reasons was a new photo was taken and then you could then immediately upload that photo and Apple Photos can also do that because Apple makes that still available, but only for Apple's like iCloud. Uh, external apps like ours can no longer be triggered on the upload of a photo. Now, we made a dirty workaround for that, which is very dirty, which is if you give Nextcloud GPS permissions, whenever your location changes, the app gets woken up and it'll check if there are new photos and upload them. It's of course an ugly workaround. Um, and yeah, it, it takes getting GPS updates with users more power than only triggering on photos, but this is just, it's Apple's decision. There's not much we can do. I personally have turned this on because at least you don't need to open the app. Right? It, it will work by itself. Because, well, I don't know about you, but I do regularly move locations. So at least the app gets regularly woken up. Yeah. So yeah, this this is as good as we could make it. It's If somebody knows a better solution for this, like our iOS developers will be very happy to hear it. I know that our, our developers spent quite some time trying to come up with something better. But this is really the best we could come up with. So if somebody knows an API call or a trick or something document, ideally document, right? We don't want to break any Apple rules because then we're out of the App Store and, you know, we are not a big company that can strong arm Apple into letting us back in. If they don't want us, we are out. So it, it needs to be like allowed by Apple. And that's probably, yeah, I don't think it's possible because they are very strict on these things. Uh, Kevin Dider asks if there are any improvements planned for our Nextcloud client app on Android, um, because at the moment to get calendar and contact sync, we require a third party app. Do we have any news on that? Yeah. So about, um, the web dev and the sync calendar contacts without apps like dev X5. So this is on Android. Um, Android doesn't have native dev, um, call dev and car dev support. Uh, you need a third party app for that. Um, 
made by our, our friends from uh, DoveX. Um, yeah, we haven't built that feature in simply because it's really a ton of work. Um, and well, there is already a company that makes that. Um, it's open source. If you really can't afford paying for it, you can install uh, DevDroid from the, 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 the free store. Um, Help me out, Marius. What's the name of this free Android? Uh, free Droid? Yes. No? Oh, you, do you free mean the store? That would be F Droid. Or the, the yes, F Droid. F Droid, no, yes. Free Droid, yes. F Droid. So, um, yeah, and like, sure, we could fork their code and put it into the Nexod app and basically just harm another open source project. I, I don't think that's really cool. So, we don't really want to do that. And, and then we have to maintain it too. Um, so yeah, we, we don't really have plans to do that. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's okay that, that you have to install the app, to be honest. And we, we integrated it already, made it a lot easier. So if the app is installed, DevRoid, um, all you need to do is go to the settings in Nextcloud and just say like, you know, um, connect calendar, connect contacts, and then Nextcloud will talk to the DevRoid app and um, to the DevX5 app and set it up for you. So it, we wouldn't make it much more user-friendly other than that you wouldn't have to install that other app, but it would otherwise work exactly the same. So it's a long story short, but yeah, we, we made it as, as user-friendly as we could make it without harming another nice open source project. Next up, um, Islamic Audiobook Central on YouTube asked, um, it would be great if you could sync your channel over to Odyssey. It literally just takes a few clicks. PeerTube may also be worth considering, especially as you're promoting decentralization. Um, that's a very good point. I'm sure Jos has also a few thoughts on that. Uh, at the moment, um, we have like just the already existing and bigger reach already on YouTube. So we will keep doing that as well, but um, we might explore other options, I believe. So this is talking about like the the video that we do, the videos we do. Yes, I suppose. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, it would be nice, of course, to be on these more decentralized platforms. Absolutely. Um, and I think we will put in the effort there. But of course, well, we also have to go to the people where they are, um, so that that wouldn't replace what we currently are doing. Indeed. All right, then we have a few questions and comments about Nextcloud Talk. Uh, Janko on Twitter says, is Nextcloud Talk independent from the Nextcloud push middleman or not? I used, to, I used Talk from the beginning, version uh, 12, interesting service and work. Thank you, Janko. Um, I believe he's asking about uh, the push service we use for notification. Is that synced to our, to our client, uh, client push or is that something independent? So Nextcloud Talk um, has like the, the high performance backends. Uh, which, well, you don't need strictly. Um, and it can do indeed push notifications. And the push notifications, uh, they work via a server that we are running. So because for push notifications, you need to use the Android and, and uh, iOS services. So somebody needs to be running that server and we run a free server for home users for that. Um, next, I'll talk. The app uses that. I'm sure, uh, but the way we use push notifications with Nextcloud is that the only notification that is sent via these networks is, hey, there is an update. And then the application will pull from the server to get the content of the update. Uh, so we were, it's independent in the sense that we're not sending the actual notification. However, if you wouldn't want to use the service, um, you would need to poll. So you need to check in every minute or every 30 seconds to see if there's an update. Now, of course, on both Android and iOS, your app will simply not keep running the whole time. So that can be tricky. Um, there are some workarounds for that, but this is really quite a yeah, big thing. Um, so I, I yeah, I, I hope this answers the question. We have some things, uh, I think some work has been done to be independent from the, the iOS and Android push services. Um, but I don't think that the apps would work without that. At least they wouldn't give you timely notifications. Of course, you can use the app. I'm sure it'll function just fine. It's just you wouldn't get notified when a new message comes in. You would have to be, for example, in a chat room to get the new messages because that doesn't use push. I believe if you're in a chat room and talk 
it has a constant connection with the server. And uh, you will get a notification or the, the message come in right away. You just wouldn't get a notification on your you know, lock screen, for example. Right, so so Nexo Talk is independent in that regard. It doesn't use the push notifications uh, for these kind of things. I hope that answers the question. I think it does. You should probably highlight as well that uh, how it's set up at the moment and the default behavior is that we are only like telling your your app that it should talk to your server and that the actual content of that preview or whatever text being submitted is not going through us at all. all right. Uh, then we've got a bunch of questions regarding uh, Nextcloud running in containers. Um, the question that uh, that I might come on to cover is, is one that we get like with pretty much every release, um, which is like, when is this becoming available on Docker? When can I update? Where is that stuff coming from? Maybe you can uh, explain a bit how that process works. Yes. So there are a couple of ways indeed you, you can use to run Nextcloud. We have, of course, the zip file completely manual. Uh, we introduced the all-in-one Docker a while ago, and from Nextcloud gave me highlight from the company, and as part of the release process, that's it. Um, so, uh, of course, we have some, some images and things for customers, um, but we only make a zip file, and since a while, we make the all-in-one Docker image, and both of these are ready on the day of release. Now, we tell our community who builds other things like, for example, the Nextcloud Docker image, the community Docker image, um, the Snap. Um, um, yeah, and there are images for, for other platforms. We tell them um, when the release is, et cetera, but it is otherwise up to them to update you know, their, their, their tools. Um, and I, yeah, I, I can't really tell you when that happens because it really depends on when, you know, the, the volunteers have time to, to update, you know, the Docker image to test, um, et cetera. And this, this really varies enormously. Some of them are very quick. Um, others spend a long time testing to make sure that nothing breaks. Uh, for example, the snap is, uh, from what I can tell, incredibly reliable. I've literally never seen somebody say like, hey, you know, the snap broke for everybody or something like that. that. That has, as far as I know, never happened. And I mean, we have tens of thousands of servers are running the snap. So um, yeah, it, it, it's really something out of our control, basically. Right. Uh, we also got, since you already mentioned Nextcloud.io, the all-in-one container, uh, also lots of love for that uh, along, among social media, not only the YouTube comments, um, and also I'm personally a huge fan. I've uh, just the other week updated my local Raspberry Pi setup to something running up on Linode, and I used the all-in-one container for that. And I was literally up and running in like 10 minutes, plus when the DNS record changed to point my URL at it. So that was really fun. Um, as another container question asked by ServerTech, is there any way to change default storage path for Nextcloud Docker container? Uh, that one I can answer because I did that the other day when I was setting up my uh, my Erlen one container. Um, that's um, on the AIO GitHub page and on the official Docker uh, repository store page or front page for that as well. We'll link to that. Then another question we've been asked uh, regarding more of a privacy overall topic is, what's the difference between OneDrive and Nextcloud? They look at the same at first sight. Well, there are, there are many answers well, to that. I'm glad to hear, yes, but I'm glad to hear that they look like the same. I mean, this is because in the end, there aren't that many differences other than the fact that one of them means losing control of your data and the other one is not. I mean, the main difference between OneDrive and Nextcloud is that with OneDrive, there is one place, one company that takes full control of your data. They can make all kinds of promises, but of course, in the many countries where they're active, if they get a legal note in, let's say, China or in the US that says hand over data from this user and they don't do it, they will get big fines and have people go to jail. So they will hand over the data. With Nextcloud, we cannot access your data. We don't control it. You have to decide yourself where to host it. You can host it on the server yourself or with a company in your country that you trust. And nobody can take get at your data unless they come to you or whoever you've decided you trust to house your data. And that is the main difference. Uh, of course, it has other benefits. For example, if Microsoft tells all their customers uh, or Google, uh, let's say Google decides that 
from now on, you'll have to pay for Google Drive uh, twice as much as what you pay today, or maybe they decide to shut down Google Photos or Microsoft decides that they're not making enough money with a product and they shut it down, then you can try to extract the data. Maybe you will then be able to get some of that data out. Um, but like with files, for example, yes, you can download your files. You cannot download, um, or maybe you can, but you can't import them anywhere else, uh, the comments that people did on your files or the history, um, the activities, the versions. Um, uh, if you shared those files with other people, those links will no longer work. If you um, shared them in a chat room somewhere, they will no longer be there. If you attach them to a task in a project management tool, they disappear. So all this data on top of the files themselves disappears. And well, if Microsoft OneDrive shuts down or if you move away from it, there's no other place where you can import whatever data you can export. So even if you can export the comments and all the other data, there's nowhere else where you could import it. With Nextcloud, of course, you can not only export your entire Nextcloud if your hosting provider decides to shut down or gets bought and you don't trust them anymore or anything else. Um, you will then also be able to import all that data. And if you were running and hosting on your own URL um, and you switch the provider and you change the DNS, then all the public links will still work. All the shares that you did with other people will still work. Like everything is back. So not only um, are you in control, but you also have the ability to move from one place to another. Which with the big players like Microsoft and Google and, and Apple, you just, sure, you can export some of the data. And even if you can export everything, there's just no way to import it anywhere else, right? Like think of Teams, all your chats. You can export them. Probably, I guess, Microsoft offers an export function because they legally have to, thanks to the EU and you know countries pushing on that. But they don't offer an import option. There's, there's nowhere where you can then import it again. You can't go from Microsoft Teams to Slack. Or the other way around, you're stuck. And so with Nextcloud, that's that's the difference between OneDrive and Nextcloud and all the others in Nextcloud. You can go from one Nextcloud server to another um, at any hosting provider you want. You have that freedom and you have that control. Thank you very much for watching. If we didn't answer your questions, don't worry. Um, we recorded for over an hour, so there's a part two coming of this. Um, but please keep asking questions down below in the comments and let us know what you think. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.